I'm having consistency with the basic LUT frequency. When I combine all the other ones, it's not as effective as just uh, the LUT boost, the basic LUT boost. I don't know if anybody else having different experiences through all of them. So jump in and just share your thoughts. What has it been like using the luck frequency uh, driving? I've you know driving even thought. So it's something interesting. When I'm running the luck boost frequency, when negative thought comes in and I turn it on, it seems to dissipate. It's interesting. And I and I tested it. I tested it with other frequency. You know, thoughts come in, can't control it. But when those negative thoughts comes in that impact your emotional state, your physical state, it seems like <laughs> the luck frequency just it's like it holds it at bay, right? And I do the luck and the luck boost. I've tested the luck boost. I've tested uh, lucky charm, uh, ultimate luck, all the, all the luck <laughs> you can imagine. But it always come back to just lucky or the luck boost. The basic luck boost that seems to be more effective for me. Uh, anybody would like to share? Yeah, the look, the look boost, um, I've been noticing several things been happening. Like, so the last time I was on the webinar, and uh, everybody was able to get blessed with that. Um, somebody just like, so my, uh, my fiance, she does like catering. Mm -hmm. And somebody just like randomly sent her like a $700 just like loop for, for an event for next year. I'm mm -hmm. going to be for this year. They mm -hmm. said it for next year. Yeah. And uh, a mechanic found an issue on a truck, and he changed it before he, he fixed it before I went out of town. Uh, somebody offered me to rejoin, like, a membership for half off. <laughs> uh, I found another, like, music membership for, like, only, like, $30 a month. Yeah. That's, like, showing me everything I want to do. Uh. I was looking for some space in my house to like set up my music stuff. And I was like, man, we ain't got no space. And I played it the night before. And then I woke up and like everybody in the house just started cleaning up. And I realized yeah. we got a lot more space than I realized. Yeah. Wow. Um, that, that, that's fascinating. Yeah, I'm like, yo, all the instances, the stuff that I can remember, I just kept like a journal. I'm like, all oh, this stuff can't be a coincidence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she gave me like $150 of that $700. I was, I was surprised <laughs> about that too. You get your 10% yeah, cut like, and bring what? the luck in. <laughs> okay. I was like, oh, I was like, okay. I was like, okay. I was like, so if I'm changing, that means stuff around me is going to change. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's something I, I want to get into today because as an educator, the reason... I'm gifted at what I do is I look for the path of least resistance by finding the common denominator that navigates, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in, within the scope of education, I always say there are two types of learners, right? There is the sheep and then there is the wolf. So wolf mentality versus a sheep mentality. You have to ask yourself on this transformational process, are you a sheep or are you a wolf? Now, what is a sheep? A sheep is one who is passive waiting for things to happen first before you act on it, whether it's emotionally, psychologically, or even physically, right? You're waiting for somebody to come out there to fix the problem rather than you fixing the problem from within. So all of the training we've been doing previously is to focus on the fact that you are the creator. All your thoughts, all your memories, what you perceive as thoughts and memories are expressions of your creative force. Every time you go inside, you're actually creating. And the creator out here that we call source, God, whatever you want to call it, just mirrors that. Well, because if God is truly all loving, then why are people suffering? Why are thousands of kids being killed right now in wars? Right? That's because the law of creation, because we're infinite. The law of creation says what the collective vibrates at is what the reflection is going to be in a creative way. So what we have for a long time have not really engaged in is the internal uh, component. A uh, lot of people don't want you going inward 
right? Because you go inward, you, you empower yourself. And in order to control you, it needs you to be reactive outward. So when I'm in a classroom, for example, and I'm working with young scholars, I call all of my students scholars, I look at what are they feeding inward? Because no matter what I do out here, it's just an illusion to what is out there. I'm only mirroring. So I can be teaching from my perspective because my reality is my reality. So a lot of times teacher will get in front of the classroom and teach in the most amazing way that they can perceive it. Right? I did a phenomenal job teaching, but how was it received, right? Because it's something called academic blindness, cognitive dissonance and a lot of distortions happen. So you're up there doing the best, but the scholar is blind to you, right? You might be up there trying to teach the students how to fly because you're perceiving them to be butterflies when they're just caterpillars, right? And you say, well, calip butterflies within them, right? But right now they're caterpillars. They haven't gone inward to go through that metamorphosis to transform into a butterfly. So that way you can guide them on how to be a butterfly. So a lot of times we forget where people are because we forget where we are. And so I encourage all of us from past training to go inward and start to know thyself. Know thyself unconditionally. Be truthful. In fact, I had some students that took a test. I, I usually don't care about tests. And there he brought me the test. I said, I'm going to ask you a simple question. But I'm not going to accuse you. I want you to tell me, did you cheat on this test? And I need you to tell me with excitement, right? <laughs> At first, they felt embarrassed. They looked down. I said, no, I need you to look me in the eyes and tell me. Mr. G, it was the awesome, coolest thing to cheat. I said, I want, I want you to speak that with conviction. And he was like, yeah, I did cheat. You know, he got a little excited. I said, see, that was the drive that drove you to cheat. Right? And so now you found that drive. Let's see if we can zero that out so we can redirect that drive. So next time you don't cheat because they might have an environment where you cannot cheat. Right? Because we're inspired to cheat, because we find creative ways to cheat. So how can I take that creativity within you that guided you, led you to cheating, to not wanting to cheat? And I think that's how I look at life, even as we experience all aspects of it, whether it's health and wellness, education, and whatever it is. Right? We get excited doing certain things, and sometimes those certain things that we do, if we can rechannel the excitement that leads us to it, we may be able to redirect other aspects. Like for example. Uh, you might like going to getting a double quarter pound of meal or triple quarter pound of meal and sitting down and salivating and all the pleasure, hormones, everything just kicking up. <laughs> You're just excited. Oh, my God, this is so amazing. Well, that excitement can also be channeled to us eating healthier or eating something different, right? There's no judgment in the process. And so when I went back to my student, I said, there's no judgment in the fact that you cheat because I really don't care that you cheated. I care what you do next because your next step will lead you to your next level of success. So how can we practice for you to internalize how to be successful without needing the creativity or the creative way to cheat? And they respected that. And they went back to their seat and I could see most of them lay their head down and almost reflecting. For the, it seemed like a first time reflection I've ever seen from them. And I think they're thinking because it's not about me. It's not, a, it's not about me presenting and getting you to take an assessment. And I look back and, and check it off and say, well, I've done my job, you fail, okay. I, I don't care about that. I care about how you internalizing yourself and how you internalize your environment. So a lot of things we talk about previously is all about what are you internalizing? You, we have a collection of belief system and ideas that have trapped us to keep internalizing distortions. We interfere with the flow. And the creator out here says, I'm only going to mirror your vibration. And to marry your vibration and create resonance, right? Resonance, the connection between you, people, places, and things that aligns with you. So a lot of times the birth of a feather flock together is because you're gravitating. Poor people are around poor people. Rich people seem to congregate around each other. And, and it's the mentality and the physical experience, all that creates that uh, uh, frequency and that vibration within you. So what I wanted to do today, I wanted to see what strategy we can put together by leveraging the Chi Life technology and whatever other uh, tools we have. Remember, I wrote the book about meditating in the morning, being mindful, uh, journaling, and different things like that. Those are all tools. How you choose to engage those tools would develop your vibration in that context, right? Because all of our experience are unique contexts. 
So if you are someone having what you perceive as negative experience, if you're a positive person, you can't go through a negative experience. You go through experiences that bring the outcome of your desire. And sometimes it could be perceived. Okay? So let's reverse a little bit. When I'm driving and I'm running the luck frequency, what is interesting, things that used to agitate me don't agitate me anymore. I'm calmer, I'm balanced, seem to be more centered. That in itself is transformation. It's not always getting my way because sometimes getting my way is not the best way for me. So that patient, uh, 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 that compassion when someone cuts you off, those things I see, it seems to be developing more and more within me. So I get excited when, <laughs> when I'm calm. I was like, I can't believe I didn't react to that. Well, I didn't react to that situation. It is what it is until it becomes something else. And so I'm also seeing that, you know, as I work with my youth and others, I'm seeing the same thing. Once they begin to vibrate in a, in a certain way, you know, and I want to share this other testimony. Um, I had a student that was very reactive and the student engaged in reacting. And, and I didn't understand what a reaction was coming from. It all, you know, this particular student always counter. Every time you say something, you counter and counter and counter. Well, and I said, well, obviously that student is vibrating on that, on that nature, right? What is that nature coming from? And come to find out, her, and the, the student's mother was where the nature was coming from. And no one has taught the mother that the things that you do creates a vibration and that, that environmental conditioning that you have around your family also creates resonance that, con that connects to that, you know, to those kids that allows them to start vibrating at that same level, right? Like attract like. And, and when you see those kind of dynamic, it's hard to really make a difference through words. That's why everybody like to use words, textbook. Let's put curriculum together and fix it. You can't fix the problem with words. You got to fix the problem with vibration and frequency and energy, right? Because if you focus on words, how they decode, how they interpret those words also impact how they vibrate according to those words. And so this technology is even more needed than ever in the schools because if we can put these vibrations into the schools, we can change the vibration of those scholars as when they go home, they can they oh. can be charged to impact. And that's what happens to me too. When I'm charged and I go into the school, I seem to impact my students in a constructive way. Just by being around me, sometimes I feel drained. Not sometimes, all the time, <laughs> I feel drained. But it is worth it because I want to be that beacon of light that they can see the best version of themselves. And that's the same for all of you out there. I'm just a beacon of reflection of light for you to see because we're walking around blinded, pretending like we can see and we're, not. we're just bumping into each other and say, why did you bump into me? Well, you blind, I'm blind. We just are bumping, right? And we're finding no creative ways to experience the reality that we've chosen to blind to be blinded, right? It's nothing wrong with being blind, but if we choose that path, then we must find a way to live our best life through that experience. And so... um. I want to say I want today. I want today to be actionable wisdom. What step can I take to start impacting? Even though I'm experiencing a lot of positivity, there are things that's happening that could be perceived as negativity. For example, my wife um, and the twins after we, after they were born. You know, my wife is with her parents. You know, during the first couple of weeks, three weeks, so she can get the necessary support. And um, I was almost like, well, I need to spend some quality time with the twins. Right? I wanted to spend some quality time with the twins. But responsibility, different reasons were coming up. And I was justifying those reasons why I, I work at the school. I get home late. I have my one-year-old. It's just a lot of distraction. But I desire it. And a lot of times what might be perceived as negativity is not negativity. It's actually a transformational path. You know, my wife... I you know doctor insists that she go to the hospital to be checked up because her legs were swollen, uh, fluid buildup, and she went to the hospital and they checked her in for two days. They said, you know, they were trying to be, you know, um, proactive rather than reactive uh, for uh, certain distortions. But those two days, I had the twins, twenty four seven, and it was the most magical experience for me to hold them in my hands and engage that connection. So. Even though the situation that happened with my wife, 
I knew it was part of that whole transformational process to manifest my experience. So I didn't have no judgment. I just stayed in neutral. She got out. She was fine. She's way better than when she went in. And so I knew the situation was going to work out. So a lot of times when you start to move on this path, mm -hmm. it says that which you persist, resist, well, that which you resist will persist. But also you got to get tested in order to be trusted for the next level of frequency. And that test comes from within. So all, although I was excited and I talked about all my excitement, my joy, well, how do I bring that balance back? So I get a call. My mother's in the hospital. She's on life support. How do you feel? Right? And now that is the question I had to internalize. How do I feel about my, my, my mother being on life support? And I had to remain neutral. I, and I had to stay neutral because obviously the energy is guiding me somewhere. And every experience is part of that drive and that that driving force. So I did, I know looking at situations that, oh my God, I'm so cursed. I can't believe this thing has happened. I just said it is what it is until it comes something else. And I had to be open to both options, a mother surviving it or not surviving it. Right? And when you get to that state, it's not a judgmental state. It's trusting. The creative force is trusting. Some people say trusting God, right? We can, can use that. It's like trusting God unconditionally to provide the how, right? You know what you want. You know when you want it. You know where you want it. You know why you want it. But that how is beyond because that how requires people, places, and things to be guided and inspired, right? People has to move out of the way. Things has to be shifted. And you don't have the capacity within the scope of singularity in your physical physical mannerism that you're in to move people places and things right and so in this case my mother's in kansas city i'm in texas and i start to see more distortions but i was being tested and the more i stay balanced i, I remember being neutral and um, to the point that i started reacting and i saw my reaction begin to impact the situation begin to feedback in the situation i had to and i kept myself back because the first day my mother was on the ventilator i stayed and i just stayed calm and i said it is what it is then of course other people you start to hear other conversations i i'm so sorry you know this has happened to you and you get all emotional yeah well this is happening you know? and then i get i got caught up my mother got off it and then the moment I got caught up, she got back on it. To the point of something else instead of in front of my window. Thank you. And and I had to sit back and just allow love to happen. And I felt my mother in her current state, but not in her state. I felt her presence around me almost like angelic. Right. And for me, when I experienced that, that's part of that energy because we're all connected. I felt her present and, and it was calming and says, she said, and it was comforting. When I'm ready to go, I'm going to go. Right. And, and that was it. And, and at that point, I just accepted it, right? When it's not up to me, it's not up to the doctor. Mm -hmm. When she was in that state, she shifted to the other side because I've been to that other side. You realize that what we think we have control over, we already predetermined the programming before we came here. We know exactly everything to the infinite of a second what is going to happen on the other side. This is just an avatar playing out the scene. And so to hear that present, that's why sometimes we feel like we get comforted okay, by that. the divine and so forth. And that's that comfort. And when you feel that comfort, you know everything is okay. And I'm saying that with you because all of you have your trials and tribulations and challenges, right? No, it is okay. The goal is to not create, do, you know, to see your mother or to see that distortion, whether it's your son or family members in a negative light than seeing them in the positive constructive light. I needed to find a way to see my mother smile, see my mother happiness, even in that state. And, that because it's, and, and that's what faith is. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for lacking the sight of. Right now, you have to make that happen right now. How do you see your husband? How do you see your kids? How do you see your family? How do you see that boss, that person who disrespects you? How do you see that road rage? How do you see that angry person, that horrible person? How do you see that? You know? And 
how can you see them in a constructive way? Because they're all playing a role. And sometimes certain things will come into your experience to get you to understand gratitude in, in your state and appreciation. And while I was in that state, I was watching a, uh, I was observing a documentary. I don't do too much uh, news. So I was flipping and I came across a documentary of a doctor going through a hearing. I don't know if it was a congressional hearing. And, and, and I know sometimes this my sting because I had, I had a friend of mine who a ex colleague, but it's a good friend of mine. She's like a little sister to me. She went through an experience where she was attacked and she was raped. And uh, when she was really young, as she was traveling from a party that she went to support a, a sibling, because a sibling um, had a, a one to go there to be supportive. And she said when she was on her way back, because she left her sister there, she had to get home. When she was on her way back, she got hit in the back of her head and she was raped. And in that process, she got impregnated. And sometimes when people share their story of strength and perseverance, you find a way to pull from that and say, I too can overcome this, or I too can become a conqueror of this experience. And she thought I was- At my house. <laughs> And she thought I was an inspiration for her, but she was much more inspirational for me as I was mentoring her and guiding her through her, her challenges. And, and, and sometimes I ask the question, you know, we hear people have conversations, we hear things, that's what I'm saying, people with emotions, they come in and they try to guide you uh, from being neutral, right? And, and I remember telling her, I don't think there's a lot of individuals out there that can have that level of strength to love that child the way you are striving to love that child unconditionally. I say it takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of guidance, right? And she says, sometimes I feel like I'm lost. Right? And that's what one of the things she wanted me to help her through. And, and the reason I'm sharing that story, it will make sense here. Uh, because sometimes when you go into an experience, you get a glimmer of reflection from someone else's experience that is empowering, that allows you to say, I too can conquer this. And so going back to her story, she has been she she has been phenomenal in raising this this child, even though her family, everybody abandoned her and left her in isolation. So sometimes when I talk about influence of information out there, I was watching news and they were, they were debating the idea of um, abortion versus to, to abort, to not abort. It is the right of a woman, different things like that. And what was intriguing was the preciousness of life, how precious life is. Right? And yes, everybody have the right to make a decision. But I think we have a way to solve the problem, you know, through energetic means and through multiple other means, than this constant uh, emotional manipulation of words. And when I was watching the video, in my mind, this show the way a baby is supported, it took a little spoon or like a, spoon, like a spatula or something and went in there ripping the baby apart. And I sat there and I said, I don't know if I could debate that conversation anymore. Because sometimes life comes at us like that. No matter what we do, we are that innocent child. We came in here to have the best experience and everything just come at us sideways. And here was somebody ripping us apart because of a decision they choose to make, right? And rather than saying, where can this lead to? Where can this situation lead to? How can this situation strengthen me, right? And get beyond me and allow the collective the energetic collective to guide us collectively in the path of this resistance. And so when I watched that video, it made me realize how grateful I am that I was in place in such a situation to make a decision for someone's life or someone's death. I can say, it's what it is. I just accept 
not make a decision of it. So with my mother's situation, I didn't have to make that decision because I'm experiencing a situation out there, a situation that's not happening to me where I have to make that decision. I allow her to make that decision even in her state because I understand energetically she was making that decision. You know, and, and I know energetically that infant also made that decision to animate within that time frame because nothing happens unless it's being predetermined. I need you to trust the process. Trust that whatever is coming your way, it shall pass. But now what can we do to guide us in that process or to accelerate that process or to transform us, transform us from within that process? And so this is the, this is the, the task I've been challenged, been challenging myself. How do I find a common denominator? So I was meditating and I opened up the cheek coil device and I wanted the device to be a guidance for me. And so we'll be looking at how we can use this device to be a guidance for you because you might think it's hopeless. Everything has happened to me, but you can have all the tools around you. You can have all the support, all the love around you. You're not going to see it because you're not vibrating on that level. So before, before I go ahead and pull up what David has done, David and his team has done with this device. Because this is something this is I have And what is interesting, this is something I have been meditating on, right? I didn't ask David to make this, these changes. I didn't ask his team to make these changes. I meditated on, this, on these changes. I needed a path of least resistance in order to guide people into the best version of themselves using the path of least resistance. And I think we may have access to that tool now. And there's multiple other tools. There's some other tools we can talk about another time, but today we're gonna to be talking about the cheat core in that sense. But before I move forward, would anybody like to add anything? So, okay. one thing I did is that I, um, I took one of the, uh, I took the love booster mm -hmm. frequency mm -hmm. and I put it in my, uh, I put it into a doll I was working in Mm -hmm. And I made like a, a six hour loop of it and mm -hmm. bounce it down. And so like now I try to make that the first thing I listen to when I wake up and the last thing I listen to when I go to sleep. So like I'll even play it like when I'm asleep and I notice that like when I wake up, it's impossible to think a negative thought. Yeah. And do you know like, what you're doing right. unconsciously, Jack? You when what? When you go into your sleeping state, you go, you pass through what is called the theta state. That's where your yeah. program is assembled, right? And before you wake up, that's where the other the programming gets reassembled back. It's like an informational transformational process, right? So the a lot of us we go to sleep watching the news. I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> we go um, watching social media. TikTok, whatever we watch it. Now, you can go to sleep watching something that's entertaining, making you laugh. Uh, but be careful how you go to sleep because you have to ask yourself, how do I want to wake up in the morning with a pro with the, with the necessary program, right? That that serves me. So when you when you before you go to sleep and you're running those frequencies, you, you take that into your programming state. And then the dream, the dream state are all the aspects of yourself. Every time you dream, you see yourself through first person. That's another. Remember, you're infinite. You're all that is and all that is not. You can't even fathom. So in the dream state, those are potential of you, which you cannot fathom. Sometimes you see things that I can't even comprehend. That's why a lot of times when we come out of the dream state, we can't hold on to that vibration because it's beyond our capability to imagine it on a conscious state. But that is also you. Every experience you have ever had through dreams, it is you in that experience in another aspect of your expressions, your collective expressions, right? And we find different ways. And you know, that's the reason a lot of people that interpret dreams, they can interpret the, vib the vibration from within you because it's a connection to you and your dream. And they can tell you the story of what that dream was all about and interpret it based on how you're vibrating because they can feel your energy and they can feel that information transformation from within you. But that's you. So I'm glad, Jack, what you're doing is saying, what am I taking to my sleep? And what am I waking up when I first get up? Because I'm trying to program myself in order to have a constructive experience, whether it's beyond this physical body. That's what happens when you shift, you're in dream state. 
and when I wake up, when I'm back into this body, what type of constructive experience. So I commend you on doing that. And I recommend that everybody find ways to do that. I have, I do the same thing. I run different frequency. I try to never focus on problems going to sleep. Like I got to run pain. I don't want to think of, I'm going to run pain because I need to be healed. Right? What is the outcome of me being healed? I want to spend more time with the grandkids. I want to chase the grandkids. Okay. I want to run the family, the joy, the happiness, those, those things that is going to give me that experience, not focus my awareness on the pain because the pain is not part of the luck. No one says, Oh my God, I'm so lucky to have these pain. Right? Remember it's a, it's, it's a, it's a dissonance that takes place. So look beyond, I need to fix my lungs. I need to fix my heart. I need to fix this and then go to sleep. I need, I need more money. I need this. That is what got us stuck is when we get up in the morning, we got to do that again. And so we have this perpetual cycle in the physical realm. So start going into your sleep state with the desired outcome. If you have a vision board, you have a journal. Journal, what is it that you want to take a step towards the next day? And, and I think that is the mentality we can take on to improve. Not just for us. What is it that we want to experience? We, we, if we collectively want to experience our world to be better, we have the power to do so. You know, we have to stop believing that other people have power over us. They are just reflection of your creative force. We are resonating based on the totality of who we are collectively. So if we are engaging those things, those distortions. We are part of it. We are part of the creative process. So how do we disconnect from it? We learn to tune in. It's like tuning into a different channel. You don't want to watch the horror movies. There's nothing wrong with horror movies because it's all an illusion. Switch the channel. How do you switch the channel? You need a you need a device, you need a tool to help you switch that channel. You switch that frequency. Yeah. You have a different experience. Yeah. But it takes action. Go ahead, Jack. That's a good analogy when you said you want to experience something different. Uh, switch the channels. And man, I've been, I definitely, definitely can't relate. To what you just said, okay. I can I can definitely relate because I've been consciously thinking about like, yo, I want to draw this into my life. Yeah, I want to experience this. I'm not, you know, and stop thinking about I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. I'm just I've been switching my mind. Like, okay, what do what do I what do I want? What do I want to experience? And like I noticed, like now they're like more generous too. It's been crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and look at inspiration, right? How inspired are you? You know, inspiration yeah. is something they want, right? When you feel yeah. inspired to do something, it's almost yeah. like you go beyond. It's not, you're not complying to get it. You're committed to getting it because you're inspired to do it. You would do it even if, if there's no consideration to doing so, right? If you're inspired yeah. to support someone, you don't need them to pay you because you're inspired to do that. But if you, if you, if you say, well, I, I need to do that because I want to do that. And without having those conversations, it's not really you want. I feel like it's an obligation in the, on the back of your mind. You know, uh, I'm supposed to be a good person, so I, I, I want to do that. And then shake their head. You know, I, you always get those people that shake their head. Yeah, I want to do that. I mean, you don't really don't want to, but you're making them feel guilty to do it, right? But we want to be inspired because through inspiration leads to transformation. And that's what we talk about intention. We need to feel inspired. Do you inspire for your next level of transformation within your life? Are you inspired by your life? Mm -hmm. You can't be inspired by your life when you're too busy looking out there at somebody else's life. When you are inspired by somebody else's life, you are inspiring them to become the best version of them, not you. Let them go. Be inspired for you. See you. Don't, don't compare yourself and don't be like. Know where you are. Because as I share my journey with you guys, you have to ask yourself, would you want to walk in my shoes? I've had individuals say, I wish I had your wisdom. I said, no, you don't. Because that wisdom came with some trials, some tribulations, some expansions. So my body felt like it was ripping apart at times. Some experiences that you don't want to wish. You don't want to have to go through the experiences I've gone through because you want my outcome. Don't mm -hmm. want my outcome. Want your own outcome, right? Because this is something that I sought after. This is not something, I didn't chase money. I didn't chase fame. I chased wisdom. I'm talking about divine wisdom. 
I changed expanding myself internally. I, I was hungry. I was inspired. I wanted to wake up and know God. And I believe in the idea of God in the book. I wanted to know for myself. The beingness, you know, was speaking to a spiritual person. And she said, how have you expanded to 15 dimension? And I laughed, right? I said, when I got to 15 dimension, I realized I was at one. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> i was at one <laughs> i wasn't at 15 because <laughs> you get there you get to the cliff you're like okay well, where is this drop is going <laughs> you think you're going high then you realize it comes to an end and you just see straight down you're like as above so below right? so a lot of times this aspiration to want to be what's where someone else is at is not what best serves you it's not what brings out your greatness we're all expressions of greatness in ways that we can't even fathom so inspire yourself by knowing that self. Know where you are. Where am I? You know, I have I have a good friend that feels like his life has come to a place where he feels like he hasn't achieved the level of success that he wanted to. But he doesn't understand if he had impact one life, he had made greatness to the world. He had impacted greatness towards the world. But sometimes we don't see that because we're still looking outside at everything everybody else possesses. And why do I not have that? Why do I not have that? Why can't I have that? Why is it not me? Why not me? The reason it's not you because it's them. You created them to reflect that to you. That's, that was the best version of you. Now, if you wanted to, if you want to be inspired, ask the reason why. What does that serve you? If you woke up tomorrow, if everybody woke up tomorrow, because the resources exist, this is a fact. This, what I'm getting ready to say, is 100% fact. Okay. There are money sitting in the bank of ledgers in all the major banks that is in the quintillions of dollars if the system decided to release that money every human being on the planet is a multi-billionaire now ask yourself if everybody woke up tomorrow a billionaire then what what do we do now because one of the phase that we're going through with AI is an awakening phase. It's an awakening phase of information. Information has been held hostage for centuries on this planet. You have the information, you have the power. But that is being changed now, right now, because now the information is flowing to everyone. Once you have that information, and what? What is sad? We chase the information because the information is power. Now we have access to the information. We are not leveraging the information because we haven't inspired ourselves to take on that power. And so we become reactive and we, we become part of the information of others leveraging our reaction to whatever achievement or goal they're trying to achieve. So I'm telling you, I know a hundred years from now, a hundred years ago, what we are right now is what the whole world wanted. And we're there and we're still messed up. <laughs> or at least we, we, we feel still messed up, right? They would have loved to be in our shoes. So how much a billionaire is that going to achieve the success? Abundance? What what in abundance do you need to bring you happiness? Because it's not money in the bank. We have a lot of wealthy people that are miserable. They're dictators. They're hurting right. people. They want more. Billionaires out there, because they, they, they're, they're on that chase. And I know a lot of kids in other parts of the world that we might perceive as broke, busted, and disgusted that enjoy every moment of life. They're singing, they're celebrating. Man. That's what helps. So a hand was raised. Go ahead, jump in, ask the question, make the statement. Hello? The question that you asked, you said, what is it from abundance that you need to make you happy? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to write that down. I'm going to post that question everywhere in my house. Because we are chasing abundance. A lot of people run the abundance frequency because they think abundance cor correlates to monetary gain. But money is energy. And having that much type of energy 
what happens to the other type of energy that you have, right? What happened to joy, happiness? Do you feed joy and happiness? Do you feed love and compassion and, and, and yep. gratitude and appreciation? Mm -hmm. Be the chase of more money. Y'all in the universe didn't need to give me verdict. Okay. No. So let's go ahead and jump into the tool because now this is the tool that you now can leverage. You have to ask yourself and, and, and chip away. Chip away at you because you're not healing. Okay, I want to say this and before we jump again. You're not healing you. You're peeling off the distortions that create the illusion that you are sickly or hurt or in pain or suffering. You have to peel it away, right? Imagine an onion and, and imagine that onion has all these different layers and you say, I want to heal. Well, you exist in there in, as perfection. You're already perfect. There's nothing to heal you. You just That's have right. to peel away all the different things that you have come to define you as that's holding you captive in that subjective state. So how do you begin to peel? Now notice I said you, not peel somebody else away. Cause I know you guys be ripping people apart. Like that fool right there, oh, you so messed up. Let's run some frequency to get in you. You cannot heal nobody out there. You cannot right. support somebody out there. Because we self heal. It's self internalized heal. That's right. So you can reflect it. Even if like my mother, what I came to realize I can't heal her. I can change the way I want to perceive and experience with her. That is it. That's it. And if I want to have a supernatural experience where she'll wake up, if I have that capacity to unravel I'm not here all the time. Tomorrow. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Who was speaking just now? Go ahead. Somebody was making commentary, but I don't know who it was. And I didn't understand <laughs> what they were saying. So I hope they speak up. Thank you. I thank you. So let's go ahead and jump onto the device. So David has manifested, or David and his team has done something phenomenal. Because when I looked at the last update, I'm like, David must have been reading my mind and reading all of our collective mind. Because what he had, him and his team, and his collective team has done, because he has a phenomenal team. I always give credit to his team. And Dave... David has this creative force that guides him. And we he, I know there's a lot of things that come at David at times yeah. from different perspectives, whether it's business and marketing and all these other things that come at him. And, but when David's in the zone, he has a way of doing things that's like this. Okay, that was source manifesting to him. That was him opening himself to the best version of himself. So let me share my screen real quick and then let me share with you what David has done with the tablets, which was uh, exciting for me. And then if anybody would like to share their thought, please do so. All right, can everybody see the technology? So if you notice, this is the, the basic frequency and notice David has added some features on the top, right? We now have the quantum, we have the rife, and we have the scalar. And of course, we have the default program. There's some training in here. You can go into the training, um, workshop training, different things like that. Okay. Um, and you can swipe and you can go through the different uh, choices of frequency. Nice. Okay. So what I was excited about is David, when we talk about the scalar, he's incorporated the scalar. So I like this little feature right here that David just added. Dr. Chi. <laughs> Dr. Chi and I had a lot of conversations since I discovered this. When I said conversations, I was going left on Dr. Chi, right? <laughs> what I mean by that, I was asking him questions. I like Dr. Chi, what, what is the reason behind it? So what David has integrated is the collective information of, of artificial intelligence, chat GPT and so forth. And he has embodied that into supporting the healing process. I hate AI. <laughs> right? and, and, and the thing about AI, I, I want everybody to understand, as information available to you in real time. Right? But it might not be true. Well, well, let's let's look at it. What let's say if I if in real time, if you wanted to know something, you had to do research, you have to find somebody, you have to be on someone else's schedule to get that information. 
But what if you could get that information in real time from where they are? So for example, if, so if I send you to my website, I say, if you want to understand the idea of transforming kids through education, go to my website. And you go to my website, you might become overwhelmed with all the information. I can tell this, go to my website and tell me the information specifically I need and pull it from the website. And it will pull that information from you. So it's on-demand support, right? And that's how, and that is the idea of abundance, right? We talk about abundance and having access. It's having access to the power of information when you want it at your leisure, right? I've used it in multiple different ways. For example, someone will send me a document. I've had colleagues that will say, Josie, I know you did some law uh, stuff in the in a long time ago. Can you read this document? And tell me what it said. And of course, it's all the fine print. And so I send the PDF file and I said, what exactly are you looking? So I taught them how to look at it. And so rather than having me do it, I said, why don't you upload the document and then ask the AI to scan the document and tell you exactly what you need to understand from it. Because it would decode and you can tell it to bring it down to your language. If you're reading at a third grade level, you can now compete with someone who has a PhD and you can have conversation with them in a constructive way. So... How David has incorporated, I think is phenomenal. So I went in here and I type, let's say, pain. Right? And you type pain. And it's going to search. Because I know this is what is overwhelming. <laughs> Look at the message. You guys see the message? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> from the message, right? I'm sorry <laughs> to hear you're in pain, right? I mean, David has done an amazing job with this, right? And I, I don't know if most of you who received David's package when he, when you purchase a cheat coin, the way he wrapped his package was loving. When I first yes. got one of his packages, the gold wrapping, I was Lovely. like, this man really put some love. Yeah. Whoever did this put some love into this, <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> so... I, so I think that's what that's the energy David put into this and his team. It tells if it wants to feel with you, right? And so it gives you these options of hyperlink that is related to the cheat core. But it also gives you some disclosure here because you know that is the standard. So what type of pain I want to recover? Recover and so let's look at recovery. Now it takes me straight to the recovery, right? Now not only does it take me to the recovery. It allows me to add the scalar. Oh, no. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Let me try to make it up here. Uh, let's pull it up some more. Ooh, sorry. Okay. Can you guys see the, the silent scalar added right there on the top? Oh. Up here? So he has added that feature. I don't see anything. Okay. I will lift it up again. Okay. It's blurry. I, I do apologize. It's the reflection. Do you see that in the corner? Right up yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. That's a new feature. Add. Scalar add. Yeah. So you can add scalar frequency directly into your healing right now. Right. So he has it combined. So when I go in here now, I can see all these frequencies, but I'm not going to click all of them. Right. I don't want to have to click all of these like this. It's too much. So he has added another feature. I'm going to go into program. And I'm going to hit create new. Okay, it'll say create new. And then let's call this pain. So I've created a blank canvas for pain. And here is, of course, I was saying uh, Dr. Chi, right? But I'm going to go ahead and go to the playlist. Let me go to the playlist. So it says play. Notice there's nothing there. I hit program. So I'm in program. We have the play. So to there's the nothing on the screen. There yeah, there's nothing there yet. Oh. Okay. So there's nothing shown yet. So if I go to the very bottom, do you all see the plus at the bottom? Yep. Yeah. If you hit that That's plus, you're going to see custom frequency. That's the very one on the top. It says custom frequency, right? Then you can say, add the right frequency to your list. 
or you can add the quantum frequency to your list. So now you have the option to add any one of those by just checking off. So if I go to the quantum and I hit the quantum, it's loading, it's going to list all of the quantum frequency and I just need to go through the list and check it off. But I can also customize the search up here by saying pain. And if I go to pain, now it's going to find all of the frequencies associated with pain from Rife, the quantum frequency. And I can just check these boxes off now that I want to add to it. And then I can also go back to the bottom. So I scroll, notice all of this, all of these are pain. And once I've checked all of them off, I will go to the very top again that I want. And then there is a plus button right here and I will add it to my list, right? And if I want to switch screen, I can just switch right here and go to the right directly and be able to pull what frequency I need, right? Joy, happiness, love, whatever it is that you're needing to start to help heal, right? So most of us, we need to balance ourselves. And so calm, you know, remove negativity or business, whatever it is, you do your search, it gives you the entire list based on what you have purchased. And now you can integrate all of that into your playlist and you can create multiple different playlists, okay? You can create playlists for going to bed, for waking up for, you know, for, through days, uh, the daily activities. And now you're just saturating yourself with those frequencies, right? And again, this is just pain, but let's say I want love. Let's see what comes up. So love comes up. This is all the rife that comes up with love. Okay. So now I can switch. I want to know what is on the track for love. And these are all the love frequency. Because someone asked me last week, well, how do I know what love frequency? I type in the love. Because love is integrated into different frequency. And you're trying to see which one resonates with you. Okay? And then you go through it. and Because love could be interpreted in multiple different ways. And then you can run those frequency. And you can see love goes on and on. There's a lot of them that are associated with love. And so you, it, this can be overwhelming, but the great thing about it now, I can just select, I don't have to go through each set and, and it'll look for, hit those three dots and then add it and go back. It was just too much. So David has yeah, made, it, he has made it simple. The star is freezing. Up. Yeah, my screen is freezing. That is my docu camera. Okay. That's going I'm going to work, work on another oh, avenue okay. to do that. Thank you. So that is, you. Uh, let me go ahead. I'm going to stop sharing and share again. Okay, let me do that. Could you explain a little bit about Scalar? I'm kind of new to this and I um, don't know exactly okay. what that is and how it enhances the frequency. Okay. So I think two weeks ago or last week we talked about it. So are you familiar with the idea of faith? Of what? Faith. Yes. To have faith, right? Are you, mm -hmm. do you do you believe in the idea of prayer? Yes. Okay. What what is the substance of prayer? What is the I missed that word, I'm sorry. What is the substance of, of prayer? prayer? Um is that you believe in something higher than yourself or the self in the limited form um, mm -hmm. you believe in something more than that and uh with a an ounce of faith and um or the possibility to create something out of nothing here you go yeah. now in the realm of science we've been told you know, 
that is not real, right? Science has challenged that, right? Well, this is the science version of that. Scalar wave, the zero point energy, is the totality of all things at the point of neutrality. Right? And there's different interpretation. When you tap into the essence of source code, you are going into your creative force in, in almost in a quantum realm where everything are possibilities, right? And so I always like to make things simple. You now have intention through this technology to put faith into your own body and to put faith into your home and to put prayer into your home 24 seven without you having to get on your knees and say, Lord, bless these heathens around me here, <laughs> right? Uh, so I don't have to act you know, crazy around them or do something I'm not supposed to be keeping, you know, all the different prayer, keeping near the cross, Lord, all the different things, right? Well, this technology gives you access to put those intentions. In, on a constant basis in order to shift your vibratory level to that which you have faith of or, or you're praying about. So when we say we're sending a scalar healing to someone across the world, well, we've been doing that. We've been praying for people around the world. Right? So we've been doing that, but we've been doing it internally. So now we're beginning to see that externally outside of ourselves and say, oh, there's something here. I can't explain it because science cannot really explain it. But it just know it exists, right? It knows everything is a potential. So now, what is this thing that everybody is so hyped about? That's part of that information, right? That information is out here now. So I have a piece of technology that I can send prayer or faith through. I'm, trying, I'm oversimplifying it, but I'm making it actionable to you because scalar. And I challenge any physicist or scientist or anybody out there that says otherwise. It only works with the intentions. It does not work without the intention, which is the programming. So you still have to give your intention. So the fact that rather than praying, because, well, you're praying for healing, but then you're praying for this, you're praying for that, you it can get overwhelmed. You set these programming. And one thing is, you know, you might consider that I have this technology in my home. But now this technology can, I can send the same, you know, uh, frequency that I'm feeding myself to anybody in the world because I have that intention. It worked on me. It healed me. Now I can do it to other people around the world. And that's that what. Part of the, go ahead. That part of quantum entanglement. Yeah, because we're all connected. Yes, everything is connected on the quantum level. Everything is a potential. On the quantum, so that entanglement that people talk about is that there's this this unification of oneness that defines all of us. Uh, we call it the all. We call it source. We call it God. Whatever your subjective definitions are is irrelevant. We just know we're all part of the oneness. That is all that is. And that being said, the brain. This is interesting. We're learning to go beyond the scope of the programming of the natural state of the brain because the brain is a multi-dimensional system. The brain is almost, we're almost mimicking aspect of what the brain is able to do with this technology, right? The brain is able to shift on a multidimensional level. The brain is able to connect. When you have a thought. It starts with right through the city. Yeah. It's not just a thought. It could be a thought of someone else that you are, you know, in, you're, you're, you're in, in, intertwined with or someone you have pulled into your, into, into the oneness that is you subjectively. Right. So when you say, I love, oh, I love this man, or I love this woman, well, what you're doing is, is I want to entangle with her more. And now with her going through an emotional state, you realize why you going through some issues and you didn't, like, I didn't, I don't know why I'm feeling this way, right? And a lot of times the, the reason women are so in tune with, with their emotions because they're always pulling in and, and, and their, their physical nature is designed to in tune. Right. And so when they get emotionally entangled with someone, whether it's someone or their kids or family, it's, it's heavy on them, but it's intense on them as well. Um, and so we want to be also care careful who is plugged into us, right? because when you begin to plug into people, that entanglement allows you to experience that. But that is the brain ability to make that connection. Well, now you don't have to entangle yourself with other people. And I'm using the term that you use. We can do it 
outside of our talk. I say, you know something? I'm going to send this healing to my family. Whether they believe it or not, I have the intention that this can work. And so you send it. And you hope for the best, but it's the same thing as sending prayer and faith. But now you have a conviction with it. See? And you have an intention with it. Whereas before, most people don't believe faith is real. Most people don't believe prayer is real. Right? Until something happens to you. Anybody else would like to add? Now, I'm saying we have the technical definitions. We can give you a technical, but the tec technical def definitions, it's not actionable. Because when, when they talk about it and you talk to a, a scientist, how do I know this is working? They can't tell you how you know it's working. They, just, they say, well, feel it. <laughs> how do you feel before? How do you feel after? That is that is how you know they're able to determine if you have success of the experience. But the experience is real because you're real. And reality is real. And we'll understand that reality is the hologram, which means part of a programming. And we're tapping now into that programming through devices like this. So I guess I was um, comparing it to just the frequency by itself. In other words, why would the frequency then give you the option to do it without the scalar if it's that you know, if it's tapping into source to accomplish something, I uh, wouldn't, I'm just wondering why it comes unpackaged. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and let me answer that question. One of the things is with the, with the scalar is that you can't, you don't just target you. David has uh, the different levels of coils, right? He has the mini all the way to the aura. The aura expands 3,000 square foot, right? Or 3,000 square feet, right? And that is the capacity of it. With Scalar, you can actually send healing to your entire house. You can send it to an entire building, to an entire school, to an entire community. If you have an entire zip code you want to put in there, you can put the zip code. That is the difference of expansion with your intention. So you're no longer limited for me to give you a device. I can say, if you have, if they have a cell phone. Even if they don't have a cell phone, I can still send the signal to that to that house, to that home, to that community, to that city. Guys, I need us to understand the power of this. We can send frequency. If all of us got together and started sending frequency, scale our frequency to countries around the world with the intention to heal. Why don't we? That's Israel. Because we don't have the wisdom, the actionable wisdom that we are empowered to do something about the situation. That's crazy. And, and that's why we're stuck. We're stuck in the illusion of the hologram as if we're a victim. But we, we are the programmer, we are the program, and we are also the perceiver of the program. And you're awakening to realize, oh, I'm the programmer too. That's what we're doing now. David and others are helping you recognize you are the programmer for this world, for you, for all aspects of you, because you're part of the creative force. You are the creator. There's no existence of God without you. That's a fact. Because there's the totality, even in a religious context, God cannot be created. God cannot be destroyed. God is the beginning, God is the end. Well, you are in between, so therefore... Without your existence, then God cannot God is all that is. All that is. all that is not. But here's what is interesting. All that is is just one single thought within all that is not. And that's why it's been expressed for centuries. I am that I am. I'm that rock. I'm that person. I'm everything. That's what you're, ta you're tapping I into. Am. I am. The great source. And now you are allowing with intention. Go ahead, Louis. Oh, Luis. Louise. <laughs> Hello. I really enjoy your talk, by the way. A uh, couple things here. Okay, talking about God. I mean, to me, it's like there's one God. You can name it anything you want, but it's 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 the power to be. And so David and the community of of teaming up to make it a, a better world uh, with in relationship to God. I mean, how will it take to people to uh, over there in the Eastern world that Allah is still God? 
you can name it anything you want, but it's still God. But they they use it to kill people. You know, so not necessarily. So we, we, remember, that's part of that peeling, right? If we have definitions that someone out there is different than ourselves and someone out there is more destructive than us, we're simply reflecting aspect of ourselves, right? Um, well, you look at the definitions of God, right? Allah, God, same difference, right? What we have come to understand, because Christian went through this journey, remember, uh, they're, they're the youngest sibling right now, right? The Jews was considered the elder brother, and then, of course, the Christian, and then the Islamic, right? It's, you know, those three siblings, uh, there's been a lot of rivalry, you know, and we need to bring them together because they're still part of the same family. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just like siblings within the home, we all see us differently, right? But we're all part of the one collective. We have the same parents, right? We, we come from the same place. And and I think that's what we want to do more is empower, not judge. Because when we see something wrong out there, it is what is wrong within ourselves. So how do we heal? We don't look out there anymore. We look inside. If you see it out there, now it exists within you. And you have to ask yourself, why am I seeing this judgment? Why am I seeing them in that way? How have I seen myself in that way? Because you will reflect that. So there's no religion out there, you know, that is toxic. They're all, they all had good intention. Muhammad had great intention to help his people. See? Uh, it says, uh, what is it's a famous saying, good intention is paid. Can anybody help me with that? I think it's a famous intention. Uh, good intention. Road, road to hell is paid with good intentions. <laughs> Something like that, right? So what we realize is that Muhammad, uh, Isho, his name was not Jesus, Isho. Um, and you talk about Abraham, Isaac, and, and those patriarchs of the past. Right? Remember, Islamic faith have the same religious doctrination as well. They just a different interpretation, right? And so what we want is to give everybody access to be part of the puzzle that makes them unique and love them unconditionally. Now, here's the great part about it, right? We can take this technology and we can send love and positivity and compassion and people will begin to elevate beyond the subjective perspective that has defined them. Because remember, Christians was defined in toxic way. If some of you, a lot of time when people talk about the Christian faith, they haven't really read the Bible to see the history of the toxic nature of interpretation of how superior, how superior individuals should run the world, right? And the same thing with the Jewish in, you know, doctrine. They're all toxic because that's men makes things toxic when you take energy and try to control energy. People are energy. When you try to manipulate energy in that way, it becomes toxic, right? If you take, at a, a, let's say, an, an atom and you try to harness it and manipulate it, it becomes a bomb. It becomes destructive. It becomes a force that is cannot be that cannot be controlled. I'm saying that because we need to be careful how we're coming together when our subjective definition that was defined in the past, when we can come together in love and compassion and positivity, mm -hmm. who we are. Because every one of those people who indoctrinated those ideas came down to the fundamental principle. It takes love. All the commandments, it is love. No matter what the belief system, it is love. But we're negating all of that because the people in control or the people in control of those ideas wants us to be subjective because that's how they can control and we, don't, we no longer need to be controlled we don't because we cannot be controlled we cannot be harmed. the atom is within you but yet you are fine you, you, we're not going around just exploding right but the idea is when we try to contain that subjectively it can become toxic and destructive and 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 and, and it's all all of these as, as part of programming they're all aspect of programming within the collective and we can get mad at the different aspects of the programming. Right? So let me put it in this context. If you watch a movie, right, Louise, right? You watch mm -hmm. a movie, and when you turn the movie on, everybody in the movie is just happy. Oh, my God. They're just smiling from the beginning of the movie 
even the Barbie movie, they, they had to make a villain, right? So you can't just be happy in all the movies, right? So all movies you watch, if you see everything is happy from the beginning to the end, it's no longer interesting, right? You have to have a protagonist. You have to have an antagonist. You have to have all these different aspects of it. But that is the reality we have created. We create a reality of duality, right? We want to see positive against negative, and we, we see it. And then we see it, we judge it, and then we okay. peel, that okay. peeling us okay. those definitions. And so the okay. goal is to start letting go of those peeling of definitions and belief system and ideas that keep us apart, to find ways to bring us together. And we don't have to do it through words. Every religion does it through words. You guys know what is that? That's the difference between what we're trying to do versus all of the past in, in a ways of indoctrinating people. They use words to manipulate. They use words to control. We're using energy to live, right? So we take, this, we take this energy. Yeah, exactly. Politicians do the exact same thing. This all, all words of manipulation. <laughs> so what we need to do, if we want a better country, we don't go look and listen to a politician. We go here and put our intention with this, step, this device. We can put this device on America. We can send signal to America. We can send it to Canada. We can send it to the whole entire planet. What, what is your capability? Because some of you out there are so much more powerful than you can imagine. And compassion, love, empathy, feel where that other person is coming from. I see you know, Esther saying we need empathy. Absolutely. We need to understand that such was I once upon a time. I, I've gone through the same thing. You know, if you go right now to uh, Iran, Iraq, or Arab nation, you will see families that are loving. There have been several experiments that have been done. They have seen sometimes compassion and loving that is proportional to anywhere else on the world. And that's what is confusing. Their kids are just as loving as anywhere on the world. In fact, when they took kids and they examined all of them, they were all equally geniuses. There was no definition uh, that, that kept them subjective and kept them better than others. They were all on the same level, no matter their race. It's when we started indoctrinating them, we started creating subjectivity and limiting them. And, and if you want to look at, you can look up the research on, um, uh, NASA did a research on divergent and convergent. You will see how the more we educate, the more we indoctrinate, the more distortions we create. It's time out. I know we're doing a lot of words because we're distance here, but this technology wants less words. Go in there and don't be don't be selfish. Be selfless. Say rather than just healing me, I would just heal my entire community. That's what Scalar is going to do for you. To answer your question in summary, it's going to allow and you to extend beyond you. Example of this: there was a situation where I think there was a bunch of Tibetan monks and prayers that were sent to a specific place. To make sure that the world was at peace at that day. And this is a long story, I can't quote from where. But they did this incredible, like more than 100,000 people meditated that one day. And yep. for that week, they noticed that the crime and everything else went down because the power of the mind in unison with other divine beings, because there's a part of us that's divine, will merge together and we all have focuses and we all pray. Like, for me, I'm not in the group, but every day when I say my uh, prayers or whatever, I always send an intention for peace on the planet. And if everybody yeah. did that in multitudes, there'd be incredible energy that we could all meet the dial. What if we could do that unconsciously? What if we could do that without with, without the consciousness? What if we put that intention one time and allow that intention? So what if you create a playlist and say, you know something? I will put my playlist on repeat, right? I can have this playlist every evening at six o'clock. I will hit Great the global idea. playlist. Great idea. And that's what we can do. We can we we can create a playlist for the world using the scale art. And then we can look at what we want to heal in the world. Balance. I think balance and maybe even luck, right? We can it's all a school play. Let me see if I can pull up uh, the scale art and see. I know we can see it online, but maybe it has um Stassi, it only works on the tablet, right? Not on the cell phone, because I have my programs on the tablet, but I also have it on the cell phone. So it only you could only go scholar and program on the tablet, not the cell phone. Right? Well, you can do it. You can do it from on the cell phone. You can do it from online. You can go online and send it. Send it from online as well. That's where you're sending okay. it from. So you yeah, can send I'm it. I'm down it on my cell phone. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. But I wanted to share. Um, 
So what are some of the scalar energy that David has already pre-programmed? Uh, mind and energy, meditation, gut health, recovery, immune system, detox, bliss, calm. Oh, calm is huge. We need to calm people down. Too many people. Re relaxation, clarity. We need clarity of thought. Because think about it. If we're sending people to war and they get clarity of thought, they can say, I don't feel like fighting this war no more. They can walk off the battlefield, right? They can, they can defy and they can do in a way where source will interfere with that, right? Because they have a clarity of mind, right? Uh, he has beauty. He has pineal gland. Imagine if that people around the world, pineal gland starts to become activated. Ooh, it will be a whole new different dynamic. You know, uh, people will no longer be stuck on stupid. Because we're not stupid, but we're stuck on it, right? Uh, we have dream, we have abundance, we have entrepreneurship, we have motivation. We can motivate a group of people anywhere in the world. We can we can send these energy, and then we can ask David to use his creativity and his team to create maybe a specific type of frequency or use some of the chi coil frequency that we have come to love, maybe luck. Let's send some luck to the world, right? Let, what luck frequency can we share with the world? I know David has some weight loss here and some beauty and longevity, but body energy. But what, what about love? We want, we want some love frequency. You know, we need David to put some love frequency in there. So I'm going to send a petition out there. David, we need some love frequency to send out to the world. And we can start starting in our neighborhood. We can start a zip code, you know, create a playlist for your zip code. Uh, and, and, and begin to observe. Because one of the great things about energy what is fascinating when you observe it then your intention becomes more powerful because when you run the frequency in your home and you begin to see the transformation as some of the other scholars on here was talking about you begin to say oh oh i didn't know i had it like that let me do it again right and but let me go further out right and the scope uh is similar I want to. I want to say the scope is similar, like going on a a computer and using Google Map to find you, and you send you you send you frequency, and then you zoom out and you send frequency to everybody around the neighborhood, and then you zoom out and then you send frequency to everybody else further. And you just keep zooming, zooming, and then you feel like I'm in power because now when I was around me, I saw the impact of this, so I believe. And believe is the developmental process of moving into knowing. Now I know because I feel that with my intention, I can help change the world. Don't let people believe out there that they cannot impact the world because we're all being told we can't change the world and we're stuck. Last week, I would like to say this. And last week we talked about, I mentioned something about Plato's caves. Anybody, if anybody have experience with that um, scholarly work? That Plato's uh, cave, in terms of people being chained in a dark cave, and yet there's an opening that they're afraid to move out of it. Is exactly. Allegory yes. Of the allegory of the cave, right? So in the allegory of the cave, what, what it shows is our weakness, right? It shows our limitations. So you have this individual that awakened because a lot of us have awakened, but here's what a lot of us are doing, right? And you will find yourself doing this unless you begin to feed your intention and know within your intention. So anyway, he wakes up and he realized there is no chain, right? That I've had the power all along to get up and do whatever, right? And so he gets up or she gets up, goes to the back of the room and see the illusion being projected. And many of us are starting to awaken to the illusion. Um, we awaken to the illusion of the nonsense of politics, religion, and different things. And we get mad. We screaming, that's some bullshit, right? Or we get all frustrated. But at the end of the day, no one is listening. Why is no one listening? And you get agitated and more frustrated, but that's what you're feeding yourself inside, right? So when this person leaves and goes outside and see the, the, the tangible aspect of life, the richness of life, right? It's, that person felt lonely. Right? Because we're all part of a collective and that collective force is greater. It says that which is in the world, that which is in you is greater than which is in the world because inside of you is where all the collective feedback into. Right? So the allegory talks about 
this person coming back and trying to pull some of the individuals that are stuck in the illusion. And there was a lot of resistance and ultimately sat back down. Right? But we don't have to do that anymore. We can walk away from the illusion and send wisdom and send love and send positivity to the cave without us needing to be in the cave and trust the energy and trust source and trust God and trust whatever to make up the difference and go and live the best life that you desire to live. Don't, don't go out there trying to cure the world or heal the world because then you'll get stuck in the problem. Just send the frequency and then just sit back and marvel on how things are. So maybe this week, if you already got the scale on, I challenge you to send healing to different parts of the world. Okay? And we need to send some healing to the news people because the news people don't know how to send positive news to nobody. Right? Every time you turn on the news, um, I was so disgusted. I was watching um, a uh, a show with my daughter. My daughter, one Kyle, you know, 14 months watching uh, what is the show? Um, Coco Melon. And I'm watching Coco Melon and a commercial came in and everybody's laughing. And I was laughing with the commercial because I, I felt good. His grandparents were laughing and everybody was laughing. And the commercial said, laughter is contagious. So is HPV. I was like, what the hell? How is that associated with HPV? Somehow, I'm like, no, you don't put those together. Who put that together? And and you put that <laughs> in the kids. A kid was watching that. A baby was watching that. That was a YouTube commercial that came on. And it came on back to back. They're selling it aggressively. We need to send some love to those people so they can have some compassion and some empathy and understand what they're doing. Because they may... They may be asleep. They may be looking at the illusion on the wall and, be, and believing that the illusion is real. Your sickness is an illusion. Your sickness is a metaphor for the people sitting at the wall. The problems with your family is an illusion. People on the wall represent that. That's what that metaphor is all about. Your problems, you are sitting next to your problem, believing in your problem. And when you're awakened, you allow your problem to pull you back to it because of your attachment to it. Walk away. Be neutral of it. Love it. But trust that the universe, the collective, God, source, whatever, will make up the difference. May I so say I'll something? Go. Yes, please. Hello. Welcoming back to the beginning of your talk today. It's about... <laughs> You know, when doing things, are we approaching being uh, the energy? Uh, to me, uh, look at like the energy of being a sheep or being a wolf. Yeah. yeah. And uh, to me, I, that really helped me today because I, I'm i a procrastinator and I have a lot of papers, which I don't, I can't avoid it. They're there. But I, I, as much as I waste so much time. Pause, 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 Louise. What you said, yeah. I am. Yeah. If I am, yeah, yeah, you're you right. Are attaching, so you are defining yourself. It's not that you are, because you, you're so much more. But when you say "I am," because that's a belief system, that's a feeling yeah. you need to let go of. So even if you define yourself as a procrastinator, go to the richness of procrastinating. Right? If you see something, try to allow it to be out of sight and out of mind, because what you want, you want inspiration from within the procrastination, right? So when you feel inspired, you will see more. So what is happening is lack of inspiration. We're supposed to think your people are. So don't say I am in the way you speak about yourself. And that's something we want to practice. I am this or I am that. Well, you're so much more and you're all, you, you're a procrastinator, you're not a procrastinator. It's what you give yourself, what you feed yourself to. So as that sheep, right? That sheep is what is defined by what is out there. It gu is guided, it is controlled. You know, you know, when I use the analogy with students, a sheep will, will go to the refrigerator, open the refrigerator, it's full of food, and say, Mom, what are we having for dinner today? <laughs> right? When there's a stove, there's food, there's fruits, there's vegetables, and you're waiting for somebody to do it for you. And so when we look at procrastination, one of those things, we're looking outside of ourselves. 
for somebody to do it and uh, inspire us. But go in, but peel away those definitions that I am. I didn't mind, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just want, because when I hear that, I need us to understand why we still reflect those distortions because we're speaking that existence into ourselves I don't, and then we're attached to it. That was a perfect comment, by the way. Uh, reminder of really what, what you know will make our reality. Uh, but but what, what then I um here I'm sitting with my laptop and I'm at the, my table and I'm seeing my papers behind my laptop and I, and then I started to say okay how am I going to approach this am I being going to be a sheep or am I going to have the energy of a wolf then I started to uh, while I was listening to you to do things with my paper I'm going to act as a wolf I'm going to be proactive and uh, get things moving you know what you have to do to surprise you need to howl, just start yelling and barking and doing, getting to get excited, you know, and, and, and a wolf is a growth mindset mentality. You know, you want to be in a growth mindset and, and, and that way when obstacles, challenges, you know how to remain calm and neutral so you can see all aspects of it. I call it understanding the sim, you know, simplicity within complexity. I call it simplexity until okay. you're calm and balanced. You have a growth mindset. You're stuck. A lot of doctors that have multiple degrees, I'll walk into a room, even with the situation with my mother, I'm talking to a doctor and they say, well, we're giving her antibiotics. I said, for what purpose? Well, we want to see if she has any bacterial infection. I said, have you seen any, any, any outcome of that? They said, no. So I said, what's your next step? Well, we don't have a next step right now. We're looking into other possibility, but all we, we are, I said, what about viral infection? Oh, we, we don't treat viral because we don't really know how to treat. I'm sorry, we are a amazing advancement in technology as a nation. And you don't know how to deal with virus that could lead to you know, infection in the lungs. Or we don't, you know, and, and that's what the doctor is saying because there is no growth mindset. Not, I wouldn't say all of them. Some of them do have the creativity. And so please, my, my, my heart is out there for every doctor that's out there pushing. But the standard of care is the problem. The standard of care is that tunnel vision that this is what we're going to do. And we don't know how to do anything else because anything else gets us out of the box. We need to be out of this box. right? And so I say that even with yourself, learn to have a growth mindset. And sometimes your greatest inspiration will come when you're doing the least amount of work. And you will begin to see everything will begin to flow. And when it begins to flow, it become unconscious. It shouldn't have resistance in your life unless you're calling it based on attachments. So don't judge yourself, Luis, in, in, in closing. Don't judge yourself of any actions you have done. Because here's the, here's the bottom line. Okay, Stop caring about your past problem. Stop caring about what you did. It's none of your business. What is important is your next step because your next step leads you to your next level of success. So what you need to do is go and find a frequency that you perceive can elevate your vibration. If it's business, there's a whole stack of business frequency if you want to elevate your business. If it's creativity, there's a whole stack of creativity. If you want to just you know, train the brain, because I need to get into a writer's mindset or I need to be able to get into a focus mind, there's focus frequency. Run those frequency and sit back without judgment and watch the inspiration happen. And then watch what happens, how you, you know, what happens to you as you move within that inspiration. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're most welcome. Yeah. And you know, I what, actually, one more thing I'd like to add is like, a, you know, things we, uh, it's like we're a hologram, you know, we, we're a micro within a, a, a my, macro. Okay. So to me, it's like, Whatever comes to us, instead of saying like, "Okay, uh, I'm I'm scared. I'm, I'm 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 I don't know how I'm gonna handle this," if it if it shows up in front of us, it must it might be that uh, it's okay. I mean, to check it out. Remember the micro and the macro is both you. As I said, when you go in and have a thought, the creator out here that we call God cannot intervene with your creation. You go in, you have that thought. It reflects it out here with you, right? So you are both the micro and macro. As I was talking about when I was when I was traveling to a different density reality, when I was when when I was at one, right, which is the ether, I realized there was more collectiveness, right? Everything was still oneness. 
the water matters. Mm -hmm. so well, like, well, well. When I got to third, I began to see the idea of separation. And I began to go higher. When I got to 15, there was no separation from 15 to 1. So what we are chasing, we already came from. We are as above, as below, as within, as out. We are what we are. We just define ourselves subjectively. And that's why we need more of us to start awakening to our potential and start tapping into power. And we may not be able to go out there because we say we don't have the resources, but that is not true. What if, okay, and this is, Jack, maybe this is for you and others out there, right? And this is just a hypothetical, right? What if your financial wealth is not going to come through you? What if you design the program to say, my wealth is not going to come through me, right? It could come through your wife. It could come through someone else. When you pay attention to that, you'll begin to see who it flows through. And then you can support that intention to allow more of that to flow because the overflow of that right. comes to you. See, a lot of times we become selfish, right? We become what we call pigs. We, we get a pig. Yes. Said there go the answer to uh, something I've been pondering for for a few days. Exactly what you said. You said, "What if my, what if the wealth or whatever come doesn't come through you? It comes to somebody close to you, and then it flows to you." Yes, because there's certain aspect of you that flow to them, right? Everybody has yeah. a mark of a purpose. And a lot of times we take on what I call the pig mentality, pride, ignorance, greed, and stupidity, right? And so mm -hmm. we act like pigs, right? And so we think everything, we're the all be all. And one of my biggest healing that I'm working on is what I, I would call the Messiah complex. I want to heal everybody. I want to save everybody. But yeah. that is a complex of mine that needs healing. So I'm looking outside. Like my wife is a free spirited person. When I say free, free like a bird and oh my god it agitate me at times right but then when yeah, i realize uh -huh. that's the life i want i want to be that free right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> teaching me this greatest the greatest wisdom and then i've also seen that with, with people that have kids with with certain uh, divergent learning style or this what we call disability those kids are unconditional loving and they're trying to teach you to stop being so selfish and self-centered and self-righteous and all this self 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 and just be forgiving and compassionate. And we want to change them because we want them to be like us. And we yeah. want them to remember by those, you know, we have to sometimes notice that there's an overflow of the people around us that is supposed to feed into us. And we are supposed to feed into each other because we're all connected. So I say that <laughs> stop chasing your dream by yourself and realize that your dream can come through anyone and anybody. And, and whoever that could come through your kids, it can come Dang. through anybody at any given time. So pour that energy into your home. Pour that, just be the light. If you can simplify, just be the light and be loving. Yeah. And allow it to flow because when you become rigid, then you become subjectified to your subjective perspective. You know? And so, and then don't be jealous when someone else have, like, that's something Ooh, that's 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 worse. <laughs> Uh, one couple gets something, the other couple feel like it's taken okay. away from them. No, no one. Supposed to be ah. celebrate like y'all once. Oh, we 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 got that together. And they might look at you weird at first, <laughs> but you got the attention. <laughs> so, oh, you just won the lottery. Oh, we just won the lottery. Now, what do you mean we? You heard me. We said I said we. If it was my, if it wasn't for my energy, we, you wouldn't want nothing. So let's celebrate together. No, be real about yours. And if that person walks away, be okay. Because now you know yeah. you can pour that somebody else or something else. Because that's your power is to pour that abundance to flow back to you. And you will get it. And you will get the right person in time. Just don't be judgmental to us. Because you remember, you get tested. So if you see that abundance, and, and that's why a lot of times we, we see separation when people become successful, they separate from their spouses because the energy doesn't align. Because the person felt like it was them, not the pouring of the other person in them that allowed them to be that. And that's why a lot of times they're miserable, you know, as they move forward in life, you know, and, and that goes across the board because in my growing pains, I saw that as well. You know, so when you think you're running away from the problem, you will see that problem on an ongoing basis, no matter who you get with. This is about my because steps. at the end of the day, the person that pour into you is not person.
And that's what we need to invest into our into our world. We need to invest our energy collectively into our world back. We need to show love. Send Putin. Guys, I need you to don't, don't judge Putin. Send him love. Put love in his heart. Put compassion in his Run those frequencies of love and compassion in Russia. Put that in, in, in every country in Israel. It doesn't matter. Put the love in the place that it deserves the most. Put the light in the place it deserves the most. Don't judge and, and, and darken that space any more than we need it to be. So we want everybody put the love, whether it's Donald Trump, whether it's uh, Harris, it doesn't just pour love and allow the love to reflect back to you. Don't pick sides. Be neutral and just pour love into people. So I'm going to end here. Um, I really enjoy our session today. And now you have the tools. Use that scalar to expand beyond you. Use that zero point energy mindset and says, I'm so much more than just this person that people have defined as worthless person. You in your home, you may not have all the money you need. You may not have all the best life, but you are still valid. You're still important. You're still amazing. You are still beyond comprehension and the world needs you. Put your intention out there and let's fix our collective experience together and let's pour more love into each other. Love you guys. Thank you guys for co-creating. Thanks today. so much. Thank you. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to the next week's session.